Welcome again right now at Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Christians commanded to be humble like Jesus. Paul said, if therefore there is any exhortation in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any tender mercies and compassion, make my joy full by being like-minded. Isn't that powerful? Like-minded and having the same love. A lot of people say they can't have the same love of Jesus or the same love of God. But hey, Paul says you got to be like-minded. He commands you to be like-minded and to have the same love, being of one accord and of one mind, doing nothing through rivalry or through conceit, but in humility, each counting others better than himself. In this day and age, there are a lot of people pointing fingers at other people, just trying to make other people look bad, just so that they can look better, just to make themselves look better or feel better. But true Christians are commanded to be humble, esteeming others better than themselves. Each of you not just looking to his own things, but each of you to the things of others. So many people today, they are looking to justify themselves. They are looking for their own things. It's like love, 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 but only when it goes my way. Tolerance, tolerance, only if it goes my way. Acceptance, but only if it goes my way. No, we are to be humble. If you are going to be preaching love, unconditional love, then show it to your enemies. Show it to those who are opposing you. If you are going to be preaching tolerance or acceptance, then show it to your enemies. Show it to those who are opposing you. Otherwise, you are hypocrites. Have this in your mind, which was also in Christ Jesus who existing in the form of God didn't consider equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being made in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself. No pride there, no arrogance there. He humbled himself, the opposite of pride, becoming obedient to the point of death. Yes, the death of the cross. Don't forget the death of the cross was a very humiliating thing. You were publicly beaten. You were publicly disrobed. You were completely naked. I'm talking about not just a little little napkin around you like how you see in so many pictures and so many statues today of Jesus. Completely stripped, naked, whipped, beaten. And it actually says in the book of Isaiah that Jesus wasn't even recognizable. He was beaten so much. He was tortured so much. You couldn't even recognize who it was. It says in the Psalms, they ripped out his beard. They plowed his back. Okay. So he was in bad shape. He died a lot earlier than a lot of the other ones did die because he was beaten so bad. Humbly hung, beaten, a bloody mess in public for all to see. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, those on earth, and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. What a challenge to be humble like that. What a challenge to be humble. Remember, when Jesus was beaten, when he was stripped naked, he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. That's humility. That is humility. Until next time, seek God with all your heart, and if you do, you will find him. Call upon him, and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.